Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 21 of Objective-C on the Mac. In this tutorial I'm going to be covering another Objective-C 2.0 feature which is known as dot syntax in Objective-C. So um, before I go on with this tutorial though just as a side note at the end of this tutorial I'm going to be giving a, an update for the channel uh, essentially what is in the future of the Apple programming channel. So uh, stay tuned for that if you want to know what uh, is up with everything. So anyway, uh, let's dive into dot syntax. So what does dot syntax uh, even mean? Well, essentially it's just um, an added way of doing accessor methods in Objective-C. So uh, what accessors are, I've covered this before, but they're just uh, setter and getter methods that we have uh, for our classes. So for example, when we've been working with our rectangle class in previous tutorials, we would say something like rect, and then we could say set height uh, 6, or we could say height, and that would just return the value of height. So uh, there is um, how you would call different methods to set and get values. However, dot syntax kind of introduces another way to do that exact same thing, and uh, you'll see how it works in just a bit. But just to keep in mind, uh, using square brackets and saying something like rect set height will be the exact same thing, I mean the exact same thing, as using uh, dot notation or dot syntax in Objective-C. So let's go ahead and uh, create some new classes here. So um, of course if we're going to use getters and setters we have to have a class that have getters and setters. So we're going to create a new Objective-C class and we're basically just going to use our rectangle class that we've been using but I'm just going to show you kind of a revised copy of uh, setters and getters for this class. So um, here we go, just our rectangle class. We have a height and we also have a width. Nothing new, we've already covered the rectangle class a hundred times. Um, but anyway, those are the two instance variables we have. And then uh, before we created the, the setters and getters that uh, we would have for the class, but we already we also learned uh, by now you've learned uh, properties in Objective C as well. So uh, we're just going to see how this works with properties uh, just to get a little feel for it. So uh, we talked about properties and uh, we put attributes in the parentheses. However, both height and width are just integers, and they are both uh, we want um, read write properties for these, which means we want a setter and getter for both of those instance variables. So uh, we could, we don't actually need to add any attributes to uh, this property. So all we have to say is the type now, and then the name of the instance variable, and we can just concatenate the other instance variable since it has the same properties. So here we just created a property for int height and int width. So now uh, that essentially sets up uh, that we want to have setters and getters for both of those instance variables. And now I have to say is synthesize width. Actually, I'll just say height just to keep it consistent, and then width. So uh, there we just synthesize both height and width, and um, that means that we create, we automatically generate the setter and getter methods for those instance variables. So that's uh, kind of an overview of how the modern day rectangle class that we've been working with would look like. So that's uh, as far as we're going to go with that. And now, uh, we, I mean, we've already talked about the rectangle class a hundred times by now, so I'm sure you're quite familiar with how it works. So now, uh, in our program here, we're going to be uh, importing the rectangle.h header file, so we want to uh, use that uh, all the stuff that we just created there. So now we can use that class and we can create a new object with it, so rectangle alloc and init. So there we go, we just created our uh, rectangle object and um, nothing new, we've seen the alloc init uh, initialization every single tutorial almost, so nothing new uh, so far. So now we're going to get into uh, the setters and getters and how uh, dot notation is essentially different from um, just the normal uh, square bracket notation that we always use in Objective-C. So first off is the square bracket notation, and if we were to set a value to our height, we could say something like set height with a value of 6. And then if we wanted to set the width, we could do the exact same thing. We could just say a value of 4, build and run that, and you know, there you go, you just uh, did what we were trying to accomplish. So now uh, that just set the two instance variables. 
But now we're going to learn how we can do this in dot notation, how we can get the values of instance variables, and how we can also set those values as well. So um, let's say we want to create an integer here, and we'll just call it h with, as in uh, height, so h like height. And let's say we would like to return the value of rect, or we'd like to, sorry, return the value of height. So we could do something like this, where we'd say int h gets rect height, and we can see right off the bat, we're using square brackets, and we know that we're gonna be calling a method, and our method name is height, which will return the value of uh, height, and that will assign it to h. So then if we go to print this out, we could just use percent %d, and uh, we can just use h, because that's what we just assigned. So now uh, we can go ahead and build and run this, see that it works, and it should work. We know how this works by now. So set height, and we'll also just try width in here just for the sake of it, make sure all is working. And we can see that our uh, width returns a value of four. So all of our setters and getters are working fine. So now um, we've just covered how we would do this using the square brackets, and we're quite familiar with this by now. We know that square brackets are how we call methods or uh, send messages in Objective-C. And uh, so we're quite familiar with this uh, way of working now. So um, basically dot notation kind of changes this around and does the exact same thing like I just showed you. And um, but it's just it does it in a different uh, just it looks different. So essentially uh, dot notation works like this. We would call or we would just say the object name that we want to be referencing here. So we could say rect dot and now we want to say uh, what instance variable we want to target. So uh, let's say we want to get the value of height. So we could say rect dot height. And so what this is going to do is every time we see this dot uh, dot, I don't know what you want, the dot operator for um, uh, objective C when we're using that in the dot syntax, uh, basically this looks at the uh, instance variable that's in our class and it says, well, it's on the right side of this operation and since we're assigning h, we're going to say int h gets this value of rect.height. So what essentially this means is the exact same thing I typed in before, which is rect height, like so. So uh, h gets that, it would mean the exact same thing as the call above. So Again, rec.height, uh, since it will look at the instance variable called height, and it will say, well, it's on the right side of this operation. We want to we want to assign this value of h something. So we're going to be returning, or we're going to be calling our height method. And since height will return a value of whatever height is, so h will get that value, and that works the same as this method right here. So that's how dot notation works when it's on the right side of the operation. And uh, we can see when we build and run this now that uh, the exact same thing happens. It returns the value of height, signs it to h, and then h, uh, h will um, print out its value. So now we can also use dot notation for setter methods. And this is where it gets a little uh, weird, I guess you could say. Uh, it's not hard, but just a little different. So I could say rect, which is our object again. And now instead of saying rect.setHeight, I wouldn't want to call the actual method name. Again, I basically try to throw in the instance variable or the property that I created before. So what I, again, what it's going to do now is if I say rec.height gets a value of, let's say, 10, now what, what it's going to see is since rec.height is on the left side of this operation, it's going to say, well, it wants to get this value of 10. So how are we going to assign that value to height? Well, it's certainly not going to be calling rect height because height just returns a value. We, we aren't doing that. So it looks at this and it says, well, we're, we're trying to assign this value of 10 to our height instance variable. So we're going to call rect set height instead. So this entire method right here is equal to rect set height and then just passing in a value of 10. So these two lines of code are exactly equivalent. So just to run through uh, these one more time, and actually I'll just print, a, um, print this out here for a little example. 
Um, and another example of this, uh, when we could use dot notation, is in these ns logs. So if I want to return the value of h, or our height, sorry, I could say rec.height, and here I would return the value of height. Since we're not assigning anything to rec.height, we're not saying rec.height gets anything, we're just saying rec.height, and it says, well, we obviously have to return something here because uh, we're trying to print something out. So uh, rec.height in this case is going to be equal to rec uh, in square brackets height. So let's just see how this works in our uh, console here when we build and run this. And as you can see, initially the first call is equal to 6 because we set a value of height to 6 originally. We said rec.height. It's on the right hand side and is trying to assign itself to some some other variable. H is trying to get this value. So we want to call it getter for height, and that's what it's going to do. So rec.height will return height's value and it will assign it to H. So now H will uh, print whatever its value is in the console. So then the next part goes down to here, and uh, we are saying rec.height gets this value of 10. And uh, of course, rec.height isn't calling rect height, like as if it was in square brackets, because rect height only returns the value of height. So what it's doing here is saying rect set height, and it's going to give it a value of 10. So uh, if it's on the left side of this operation, as we can see, rec.height, it's saying, well, I want to assign this value of 10, so I'm going to say it's essentially calling rect set height. So that's um, now height will have a value of 10. And now rect.height rec.height is going to be uh, returning a value because it's trying to print this out. And since we're not trying to assign anything to this height value, it's going to return it and it's going to print it out. So since we changed it right here to rect.height gets 10, now it's going to set that, or it's going to print out that value of 10. And just to completely show this, I'm going to uh, delete all of our things uh, that would change this value. So um, all we really needed was this one call to set it to an original value. And now just going to go ahead and uh, go to the console here. As we can see, the exact same thing happened. So that's essentially how dot notation works. Um, and there's nothing really revolutionary to this. Um, however, if you are coming from a different language like Java, um, this might look familiar to calling methods in Java. So um, I think that may be the approach with dot notation, uh, because again, it is the exact same thing as using square brackets, but it's just a different way of doing it. However, um, there are kind of downfalls to this uh, notation. You might, you might look at this and say, well, that's kind of nice. I, I'd like to use that. And um, if you're free to use it, I certainly won't stop you if you are trying to use this notation. So you can use either square brackets or the dot notation, uh, dot syntax, whatever you want to do. But I just wanted to point out one thing which uh, does kind of interfere with this whole dot notation uh, way of doing this. So if you watched uh, quite a ways into the C tutorials that were on the channel, I covered what data structures were in C. And since Objective-C is built right on top of C, it works with all the C code that was in the past. So uh, let's say, for example, there is actually a um, basically a rect uh, structure, data structure that exists in C that we use quite often um, in Objective-C actually to kind of place things on um, canvases and stuff. But essentially, a struct, if you remember back to the object or the C tutorials, or if you want to go watch that one, uh, it's just data structures. Essentially, anytime you create a struct in C, you would use dot, uh, use, you use a dot or dot notation or whatever, uh, the dot operator to uh, go deeper into the struct. So if I created, a, a, let's say, a rectangle and it was called frame, then I could dig deeper into that frame and say dot origin. And then if I wanted to dig deeper into that, since origin actually has an x and a y value, I could say, well, uh, it's origin.x. And now this is kind of where the uh, problems come along. Because if I say something like, uh, or let's say I want to return this value, I don't know, we can do anything to it, it doesn't really matter. But uh, if I wanted to say something like this, and now I'm looking at this and I say, well, that's interesting. So it's uh, the frame, and it's setting the origin, and then it's setting the x, and well, no, it's not actually doing any of that stuff. 
And that's the problem that at least I find uh, personally with dot notation. If you look at these two pieces of code, you wouldn't exactly know what's doing what. Uh, for all that we know, uh, height is just uh, you know part of a C struct, and there's no actual difference between using a C structure or data structure and using dot notation, which is actually calling a method, which are two completely different things. However, they look the exact same with dot notation. So that's uh, my one problem with uh, dot notation in Objective C. Um, it doesn't really explicitly tell you what you're doing, uh, just from my own uh, personal, uh, just going along with um, many of the C or Objective C things. Um, just looking at rec.height, you could either determine that it's calling a method or that it's a C structure. So that's the problem with these two is that um, you use both of these all the time, especially if you're doing uh, iOS development as well. So that's my problem with uh, dot notation, and I prefer um, just square brackets, um, just personally. But again, you're free to use whatever you want. Um, if you would like to use dot notation, you can use dot notation. And I certainly am not going to kill you or anything. Uh, you're free to use it, and I know there's tons of people who use it, and it's probably just going to get more popular anyway. But um, so you're free to use dot notation as you would, uh, as you wish. But again, just to be clear, there's no uh, differentiating between whether it's a C structure, which you do use a lot in Objective C when you're working with um, different images and stuff. We'll get into that later, but. Again, there's just no differentiation between whether it's a data structure or if it's uh, using dot notation in Objective-C, which calls methods. So there's a huge difference in that, and uh, it's just worth noting. So anyway, um, this was just the tutorial on um, dot syntax. And again, if your dot syntax essentially is trying to be assigned to some value, you're going to be calling the getter method of the instance variable you're trying to use. And if you're trying to assign a value, like uh, rec.height gets uh, some new value, then you're going to be using the setter method for that height. So that was essentially, uh, yeah, just the tutorial on dot notation. And you're free to use either square brackets or dot notation as you will. And uh, that's just uh, one thing to note. So now on to, uh, like I was promising you guys in the beginning of this tutorial, that I talk about kind of the future of the channel. And essentially, um, I've kind of determined that since Xcode 4 will be out uh, hopefully really soon, uh, it's uh, pretty close, at least uh, in the developer builds for being completed anyway, um, so I believe that it will be out soon. Uh, the reason I'm holding off on uh, Coco and Coco Touch, which is iPhone and uh, Mac OS tutorials, is just because I don't want to start with Xcode 3 and three weeks in have Xcode 4, and I don't want to try to make that transition. And there's no Xcode 4 tutorials available because it's still in developer testing. So um, essentially, I'm going to be waiting until Xcode 4 comes out but you can bet pretty much the day Xcode 4 comes out that I will be getting uh, Mac tutorials, Mac OS tutorials, uh, which I'm really excited about. I love uh, Mac OS, and um, also I'll be doing some iOS tutorials as well. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much uh, just the eyeball future of uh, what's going to be going on. So, um, again, I'm just going to be waiting until Xcode 4 comes out. I'll keep making more of uh, these Objective-C tutorials. Until then, I really hope uh, Xcode 4 comes out. But Xcode 4 is just so much uh, more different in uh, how it works in general. So I, I figured it would just be great to start um, a whole new series with one, just the same developer tools. So anyway, that's basically uh, just how the outlook looks for the channel as it stands. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll, uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments section below. And please subscribe to the channel. Uh, more tutorials are always uh, in production. So see you then.